If you've had a stroke or you're helping someone who has had, then this video is just for you. Even better, if you're worried about a further stroke happening. Uh, if that's the case, then your timing's absolutely spot on. So sit tight, you're in the right place. You've probably heard a lot of the content that's here before. So I'll only summarise the bulk of it, really. Too much repetition, not necessarily a good thing. If you can, sit tight right to the end for a pretty controversial conclusion to it all. Stroke and vascular disease are two of the most common health conditions that affect people worldwide, particularly in what we might call Western civilization. I'll provide a, a, quite an overview of the causes of stroke and vascular disease in the, uh, in the traditional way. Stroke is a condition that uh, occurs when the blood supply to the brain is interrupted or reduced and it prevents brain tissue from getting oxygen and nutrients or goodness. This can cause brain cells to die off completely or become disorganised. And there are two main kinds of stroke, you've heard of them. Ischemic and hemorrhagic, posh words, I prefer straight talking, blockage or bleed. Ischemic or the blockage strokes occur when a blood clot blocks the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain. The blood clots typically form near areas where the arteries have been narrowed or blocked over time by fatty deposits. But the full stroke, same as a heart attack, is a sudden event. You're probably familiar with mouth ulcers and acne. The lining of your arteries is quite similar in many ways to the lining of your mouth. It does some extra cool things to make blood flow better, like producing the tiniest gas bubbles to act as a lubricant. It's amazing. Brain attacks and heart attacks happen when a tiny blister starts and later bursts, rather like a mouth ulcer or a skin spot, making your immune system go into overdrive to clot it. Another contributor to blockage stroke is a type of irregular heartbeat called atrial fibrillation and this can cause blood clots around the heart that break apart and end up in the blood vessels that supply to the brain. The bleed or hemorrhagic strokes happen <clears throat> when a blood vessel inside the skull bursts and bleeds into and around the brain. One of the main contributors to that is, a, is high blood pressure which can further weaken a damaged artery in the brain. The risk factors are, as you've heard, overweight, sedentary lifestyle, binge drinking, diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, family history and other cardiovascular diseases, as well as age and gender. You can say the usual suspects. And conventional advice sounds a bit like this you can significantly reduce the risk of having a stroke by making lifestyle changes to avoid the problems, such as atherosclerosis, that's a fancy word for artery disease, and high blood pressure. Some preventive tips for stroke patients include following a proper diet, decreasing the amount of cholesterol and saturated fat in your diet, controlling the diabetes, monitoring blood pressure, avoiding the illicit drugs, exercise, quitting smoking, and alcohol, reduce or quit. Artery disease is a general term, also called vascular disease. And it's about conditions that affect the heart and blood vessels. It's usually associated with a buildup of fatty type deposits inside the arteries and with it goes an increased risk of blood clots and damage to the artery itself. Vascular disease can cause heart attacks, strokes, heart failure, chronic kidney disease, peripheral and artery disease, and the onset of dementia. All sorts of scary things. They're actually very similar diseases. The causes of it, 
depend on the specific disease, but uh, can include genetics, of course, high uh, blood pressure and high cholesterol infection, injury. Uh, apparently some medicines can affect it, including hormones, and sometimes the cause is uh, so-called unknown. The risk factors include overweight, obesity, physical inactivity, smoking, drinking, diabetes and high blood pressure. And these can all be modified to help reduce a person's risk of developing vascular disease. So treatment for it can include lifestyle changes and healthy diet, exercise, quitting tobacco and medication. In conclusion, stroke and vascular disease are two of the most common health conditions that affect people worldwide. <clears throat> and the causes of these conditions are varied and uh, in include all the factors that I've mentioned. You can significantly reduce the risk. And it's always mentioned as a making lifestyle changes. So what does that really mean? The standard, that's the standard advice, right? But from that, do you then have a clear action plan uh, after you've listened to it all? I would doubt that. The information is clever sounding, but it's mostly quite impenetrable. So here's the simple truth of the things that you can do. Eat plants as much as you can. And if you're worried about the main criticisms of plant diets, that's usually about a lack of protein. Humans are built to cope with small and occasional portions of meat, but in our earlier years, as we evolved, we most likely spent large parts of our lives hungry. There'd have been plenty of food, plenty of plant food, but also plenty of competition. And as humans evolved, they, like any other species, stopped drinking milk in their first year. And it's only really since humans started domesticating animals that they would have been able to take milk at all. Sources vary, but most will agree on roughly 10,000 years that that's been going on, which is a mere dot in the length of time humans have been around, which is somewhere between one and 200,000 years. And if we consider that the diets of people in the world's blue zones, such as Okinawa, parts of Sardinia, Costa Rica, and others, where dairy consumption is low, we can safely conclude that we don't need that. Most authorities encourage the use of dairy to ensure enough calcium. But let's face it, it just isn't working. The latest US numbers are showing 51 and 33% of men and women with early osteoporosis according to their National Health and Nutritional Examination Study. That was 2017 and 2018. And what's more, if you really focus on eating plant food, you'll be doing what you can do. So if you or yours have already had a stroke, really increasing the amount of exercise might not be practical. That's the usual other half of lifestyle advice. If you did want to go exclusively on a plant diet and you're taking medication, particularly for things like diabetes, blood pressure, atrial fibrillation and the like, you would need to discuss that with a doctor because it does have consequences. Uh, all of those conditions will tend to improve. That's to say, so you might need to discuss needing less medication and your doctor needs to be able to support that. As a final note, it's important that uh, these are not the only causes of arterial disease and other factors may also contribute to development of these sorts of conditions. So if you're concerned about your risk of developing arterial disease it's best to speak with your own doctor. As ever the contents of this video aren't meant to replace or constitute medical advice on their own. This kind of information is meant to supplement the information that you already get from your regular health professionals. Thanks for watching. Uh, do like and subscribe uh, if you will. That helps the channel, helps keep it going. Uh, we'll try and produce some more useful information here uh, to follow on.